Let's Talk Ministry with Pastor Dennis Martin, where we talk everything and all things ministry. Everybody is Pastor Martin, and it is Let's Talk Ministry. It's Wednesday night, and uh, usually on Wednesday we talk ministry. Uh, every Wednesday night we've been doing it for maybe about two years now, and we get to talk ministry and to talk about things that are concerning ministry and things that involve in ministry. And so we're grateful to have you with us, grateful to have you to be a part of uh, Let's Talk Ministry on tonight. You know, there's a lot going on. And so we're going to get right into it. We're going to jump right into uh, tonight and get right into the subject of uh, what we're talking about tonight. We're going to talk about the coronavirus, the church and social media uh, as it relates to ministering those things uh, that are going on. And so we're just happy to have you uh, as a part tonight as you're coming in. Those of you that are here and those of you that will watch later, those of you that will uh, that are tuning in on YouTube, uh, we're just grateful to have each and every one of you to be a part. Let's talk about this uh, tonight. We're going to talk about uh, this uh, virus, and then we're going to talk about the church, and we're going to talk about social social media. You know, when we think about this uh, virus that is hit and those that have been affected by it, first thing I want to say about the virus is I want us uh, that are in ministry, especially those of us that are pastors, to take this very serious, even though we know and we still believe and preach the word and we believe that it shall not come now dwelling. We believe in Psalms 91 and those things. We still want to be on the side of cautious. We still want to be where we will be, uh, you know, cautious about things that are taking place, just like any other measure that we will be cautious about as it relates to uh, these things that are going on. When you think about it, um, you know, if you had a cold, if you were sick, normally you probably wouldn't go to work or church uh, unless it was just something you had to do. Or if they told us that a certain uh, storm or tornado or whatever was coming our way, we probably wouldn't go to that place. We would wait till it pass by and then go. We've seen uh, cases where churches have been destroyed. You remember a few years ago in New Orleans, it was not a virus, but it was Hurricane Katrina. And when the levees and, and everything broke and churches were flooded and those things happened, uh, when they knew they were coming, they gave them warning a couple of days early to get out of New Orleans. Some decided to say stay, some did not leave. They stayed and uh, they dealt with those things because of their decisions. And so the uh, coronavirus is a very serious thing, as we can see. And then we heard today that there are many, even here in Georgia, where it's taken effect, where the very um, uh, the church, uh, they are saying that many that are being affected are being affected by going, that have been to church services and various things. And so we're not here to debate whether someone should close their church, open their church. I think that's probably up to that pastor or whoever. Um, we decided that we would not open and we want to be uh, cautious to have our people on the safe side. And so we decided to do that. But let me say, as we talk about this uh, particular virus, we must understand that it is a very serious thing. I heard one pastor talking today that he had uh, in his church that uh, he decided to close as a mega church because he has four that are in um, four that are in uh, that have the virus that are in ICU two. I think he stated were in induced comas. Uh, and so it's a very serious thing there. We got a letter from uh, in New Orleans and just got through looking at the news. Now that's a new hot spot for the virus. Uh, and uh, some that had meetings last week, uh, they found out that those that were in on the platform in different places had it and maybe didn't know that they had it. And so that has been uh, something that has been passed on. So let's uh, really sort of keep this 
uh, a very serious and take it very serious if it's for no other reason than to watch out for those that we pastor and for those that we have been called to minister to. I don't believe that it is very, well, I don't believe that this is just about numbers. I don't believe it's just about, and I would hope that it's not just about money. And I hear people saying, well, they're keeping the doors of, they're keeping the doors of, of the, uh, supermarket open and this open well when i went to the bank on yesterday they were only letting three of us in at a time and not only was it just three but they had marked they had tape on the floor to uh, keep us six feet apart from each other and they were only letting three in at a time to do that and so uh everyone is practicing uh caution or being safe I went to the store today and and uh, I wiped the the buggy down or whatever. And so this virus is a serious thing. And I know that uh, a lot of times in ministry, uh, you know, sometimes we we get to the place that we get sort of, um, you know, we we throw caution to the wind and we just you know go and do. But I think that that times that we need to. Uh, educate ourselves, educate those that we pastor and say, listen, we need to do uh, maybe something different. We need to look at something different, which brings me to this point where we talk about this virus. Then it brings me to the point of the church, because I believe uh, and this is just me as my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. I thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. But you don't have to agree. It's my opinion. I believe that the closed door of the church. And when I say the church, not the church, but the building where we occupy and where we have services is really the building. It's not really the church itself. And so when we start thinking about that, I believe that when the doors of the building close, that it opens to us as the church and in ministry, it opens to us a different door that gives us a greater opportunity to minister to those that we would never get a chance to minister to. And what do you mean by that? Well, when I, I read the scripture, is it possible that one of the new ways of ministering will be dealing with social media and the church has to adapt to it? In Luke chapter 14, it is verse 23. Uh, well, when you read before that, Jesus uh, talks about, them inviting people to the wedding and them giving excuses. And he says in verse 23, and the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Is it possible that we are now in this new way that the highways and the hedges are open to the church simply through social media because they're, they're practicing social distancing. So could it be now that God has opened the door to pull us out of the four walls? If he's pulling us out of the four walls and means we, we don't have that convenience of being in our offices, being in the four walls, standing behind the podium, having the mic or having the audience, could it be he's pulling us out for who knows how long to minister to those that would probably never set foot in a church? Maybe someone that used to go to church. Now they, they decide they don't go to church anymore. Could it be that God is allowing this with the doors closing to open to us an opportunity or an avenue to minister to those outside of our four walls. Because let's be honest, sometimes we have got comfortable in our four walls. We've got so comfortable that we look for those that come to our church, that come to our ministries. We look for those that come to be a part of worship. We even know them by name. We know families, we know. So we get accustomed to a certain group coming to our church every week or every Sunday. And we have become accustomed. Some people have been members 20 years, 30 years. Some people have been there as long as you can remember. They've been members of your congregation. And so 
we haven't we we've established sometimes we've established ministries that go into the prison uh, we've established ministries that may go into the convalescent homes but not many times have we really went out into really what you call really street street ministry there's some churches that have I'm not saying everyone has it but I'm saying for a lot of us that uh, that hasn't been the case and so God has a way of pulling us out of the four walls. He's getting us out of the four walls. He's taking us out of our place of comfort. Because let me say to you, while we're in the four walls, we get comfortable and we get our own little, uh, how would I put this? We get our own fan club or we get our own people that we, that we, you know, they, they go with us with most of the stuff we say. Whether we, you know, whether you're right or wrong, most time they're going to go with what the pastor says and the man of God says or the woman of God says, they go with that. And so what, what happens to us is we get our own little fan base or club, what, I, I want to call it a club, I want to offend you, but those that come to our ministries and church. And so when we're preaching, they, they get to edge us on. They get to cheer us. They get to push us. They get to do that. And so we have become comfortable in that. And so to the point that we have perfected our craft in doing that every Sunday or Bible study or whatever, we perfected our craft. We know what scriptures to use to stir the crowd. We know what scriptures to use to stir people. We know what scriptures to use and what to say to do this, that, and the other. We know the exact scriptures to get the crowd moving. We know what to do. So God has pulled us away from our comfort zones because, uh, you know, we feel if one thing don't work, we'll try something else. So he's pulled us out of our comfort zone. We are no longer in our places of comfort. He's pulled us out. And now the rubber really meets the road. Now we cannot, and I'm not saying that we do, but I'm just being honest. Now we cannot entertain. We really have to have a word and have something to say. Why? Because now we're at that point that we're talking about social media, the church, social media. We're talking about, uh, you know, putting uh, you know, doing lives, uh, you know, Sunday probably was, uh, the, the, the thing was a little f fidgety on, on, um, it was a little fidgety on, on Facebook because so many people were doing lives. I don't, I think Facebook were over, was overwhelmed. Then a lot of people got offended. They said they, they took all my videos down. They didn't take them down. It was a glitch and they had to go back and reset. They were overwhelmed by how many people were doing lives because most times most people don't do no lives like that it was live everywhere on 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 uh, sunday i mean the lives were lives to the point that when i tell you we were live everybody was live everybody everybody was live on sunday and so uh you know we we, we, we had to come from that place. Some men went to church and ministered with no audience, no congregation, no organ. Some went and took their praise team. They did services like that. They did those things that would, would they felt would be a blessing or whatever. So those are the things that took place and those are the things that happened. So now understand that when we start looking at this, the church, God, I believe, it, this is my opinion. I believe he's calling us, and this is a way of sending us out into the highways and the hedges. Because somebody that's watching, you have to remember, Facebook, Facebook is is not a, uh, oh my God, uh, 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 Facebook is not a, I, I don't know how to put this to help us out. Facebook is not a uh, religious platform is not it we use it but it's not so when you get on Facebook there's a whole bunch of people that uh, you know don't need to don't they don't really know or see whatever and so when we start looking at that and we start understanding that 
they they sort of miss it. And so this is an opportunity for us to minister to those that may not go to church. For instance, uh, I hear someone says, teach on Revelation, that's what people need to hear. Listen, I had a young lady, I was ministering live before the coronavirus. This is way before the coronavirus that popped up on the feed while I was ministering and said, Pastor Martin, pray for me. I need to be saved. I need to give my life back to the Lord. And I did it. I didn't wait until later. I did it right then. And uh, we, we, it, we led her through the prayer and she accepted Christ, came back to the church. She stays in Ohio and two or three, I know, I know two times she's got on a flight and just flew in strictly to be in service. And her mother was in the hospital recently and uh, she was able to allow her mother to see the service live and minister to uh, them and pray for them on social media. So I'm saying to you that God is opening up for us an opportunity not just to minister to our fan base or to minister to those that we are used to ministering to, but to minister to those that are, um, that to minister to those that need to be saved. Uh, for those that, you know, uh, and, and, and I'm going to say this, I, I see somebody's coming and I'm going to deal with that because that's another thing that I'm going to be uh, talking about. And that is, we have an op we're in a place now that this is an opportunity that we cannot do business as usual. We have to, you know, you can ask for those that support the ministry and we do it. Everyone, I'm not saying not to do it, but we cannot make it now where we are ministering on this platform and minister the same way we did on the other platform. Matter of fact, on this platform, you may not be able to, well, you won't be able to, you can, but you won't be able to do uh, the hooping and and those type of things and, and grabbing your ear and just, you know, uh, making it sound good. You've got to be able to actually give a word and rightfully divide the word of God that somebody can be delivered and set free while you're doing that. And so it's important for us to understand that the atmosphere has changed. When you talk about doing ministry of social media, we're not now, here we have to understand, we're not just ministering to our, uh, we're not just ministering to our congregations. We're not just ministering to people that have come uh, to be in our four walls. Now we're ministering to people outside of our four walls. We're ministering to people that are broken. We're ministering to people that are hurt. We're ministering to people that need to be, that want to be saved. We're ministering to people now that their homes are uh, 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 in disarray. We're ministering to people now that are dealing with their jobs and everything. And then we're ministering to people that even that know Christ that's got to deal with this because they're dealing with the situations with their family and those that are affected by this particular thing. And so this is what we need to understand that we've got to get to this place now that we come up with another way and understand that he's taken us out of the four walls. Now, then there are those that uh, have said for many, many years that uh, social media, I've had, I've heard people preach. Uh, and, and sometimes when I hear people minister stuff, some things I don't, um, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Some things I don't pay attention to comments on. Some things I don't pay attention to people. I respect your opinion. That's fine. I don't argue with people about their opinion. Uh, I've always said you can have whatever opinion you want to. Just be respectful with it. One thing I will not tolerate from anybody is disrespect. That just won't happen because now I will deal with disrespectful people. I always will and I'll do it on any platform, even this one. But now understand that we have to, we have to get to the place that we understand and that we know that social media now, it's amazing. It's like people that years ago, I heard people preach years ago that divorce was against God. 
There's no divorce in the kingdom of God. I heard people preach that for years. I heard people talk about it. I heard people send people to hell over it and said, there's no divorce in the kingdom of God. There's no divorce. And if you get divorced, you're going to hell. But then I saw them when they went through something in marriage and they end up getting divorced then and they wanted to remarry, they changed their whole message to accommodate them. They changed their message to accommodate them. They, they changed their message. Now they're being accommodated by the message change because now it's not just applying to others. It's now applying to them. And so understand that there are people and maybe some of you that thought for years when you saw people on TV and social media, I've heard people preach, you need to get off social media, it's the devil. You need to get off social media. God ain't in social media. But now I see the same people that preached against social media, now they're on social media because now you can't open the doors of the church or you can't open things. Now social media is not bad. And I, you know, I'm not going to even say I got a problem with that, but if it was bad before, what makes it good now? Anything can be bad. It all depends on the way you use it. And, and you know, when you start thinking about it, anything can be bad. Uh, you know, there are those that preached against TV, uh, televisions years ago, but they got now they got TVs in the house. There are those that preached against going to the movies, but now they've, uh, they, they didn't go to the movies, but they end up with HBO and different things in their house, and it piped straight into their house, so they didn't have to go to the movies. So I, I think that a lot of times we, we, we have to stop being hypocritical about certain things. Stop jumping on what you want to jump on and then leave out what, what satisfies you or what you want to do, if that makes sense. You know, we're, we're quick to jump on some stuff, and we're quick to leave some other stuff out. Uh, because, and there may be a lack of wisdom, I don't know, but we jump on stuff and we jump on it and we jump on it, but then we, we, we get some time amnesia, uh, Alzheimer's when we don't want to deal with some stuff. And so we talked about, people have talked about social media and said it was the devil. When people was on TV, y'all looking at that one eyed devil and stuff like that. But now we're seeing the importance of social media, not just to minister, but to uh, just to uh, reach out to those because of this thing that's going on. I'm able to get my iPad. I'm able to get my iPhone and to FaceTime uh, my son and his wife and my grandkids and talk to them through way of social media. So we understand that it was coming this way. When we were in third grade, when I was in third grade, they talked about it being this way. And, uh, you know, so here we are and, and we have to be careful that we do not. And I say that we do not get to the place that we don't understand the value of everything that's going on. Anything could be devilish. Anything could be used. Uh, you know, it could be you, you could, you could take the, um, and I'm just, I'm coming straight tonight. You, you could take, you can be in the pulpit. And use the pulpit as a devilish weapon by saying the wrong stuff. You can get on social media and do the same thing. And so we have to understand that we're dealing with uh, the church and now we're dealing with social media. We don't know how long this will be, how long it was la will last. Some of us, we don't have no issue with it because we were doing social media before a virus or anything else. We've been doing it a couple of years. So, and we've seen people get saved uh, by doing this. We see people get delivered by watching. We've seen families put back together by watching and by us sharing the word of God. And uh, we've seen people come and say, I got saved when I heard you preach this or when I heard you minister, I was going through my feed and just stopped to hear you and I, I got I got saved, I got a word. So I think sometimes we have to understand, and I'm talking about talking to those that are in ministry especially, stop being critical, so critical of everything that you may not have an understanding of. 
or that you may not know what to do with it. Don't criticize everyone else that's doing it. I do believe the playing field has changed. I do believe that we've got to deal with how we deal with stuff a different way. I do believe that now you're talking about, uh, when you talk about Hollywood, uh, uh, action, uh, lights, action, camera. We are now at that point. We are now at lights, action, camera. You talking about the world, the Bible said we are uh, living epistles read of all men. So if we are living epistles and they're reading us, now the world is going to read us more. They weren't coming to church to look at us behind the four walls. Now we are come, now we have moved beyond the four walls into their territory, into their area. And we must produce. We have no more excuses. We can't entertain each other no more. We don't have our fan base. We don't have when we go on. I got a thousand people came on because we're popular. The world don't know us like that. So what are we going to give them? What are we going to share with them now that we are put in this place that we've got to give a real word? We, we can't be faking and, and, and you know, they don't know anything. Uh, they, they don't know that. Now it's got to be a word, real word. Not only must we uh, uh, get what we can minister to those outside, but we also need to know we got to minister even to those that we uh, love, even those that we, you know, are with. We have to learn to minister to them also. And so that's important for us um, to do that. Let me, uh, let's see. Yeah. And so, again, I, I say to those of you, this coronavirus, let's be, let's deal with that on an honest note. But now the church has shifted from beyond the four walls. No longer can we do ministry the same way. We do not. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm talking about me, you, and everybody. We do not have our, what we might as well call it what it is, our fan base that likes everything we do. Even if you're not doing it well, you, they like it. We've shifted. There's a whole different platform we own now where we got to be understanding that people may be critical of what you do because they don't feel that it's enough or that you're doing it the right way. And I'm not talking about church people necessarily. I'm talking about people in the world. So we've got to come a different way. We've got the word up. We've got to rightfully divide the word of God. We got to know what we're talking about. We just can't be throwing stuff out that we call a revelation. And I'm going to give you this revelation. We're not dealing with that group now. In church, we could do that. In church, we could do that. Behind In our four walls, in the confines of our four walls, in the place where we were, we could do that. We no longer can do that. On this platform, you just can't, uh, you know, uh, God said you're going to be a millionaire. God said, that on this platform don't work with everyone's. You, you got to have a real thing going on. I mean, you got to have a real thing. I remember years ago, and I, I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done. I remember years ago there was a, a, um, a lady that was in revival in Los Angeles, and uh, she was a, a, a prophet, and her being a prophet, a prophetess, while she was there, she, um, she was in the service, and some uh, gang members came to church. And uh, the, the leader of the gang came to church, and they were in the service and stuff. And the Lord had her to minister to the head gang leader, the leader of that gang. And when she ministered to him, she, didn't, uh, she called him by a name that was his nickname. Now, no one in the gang knew his nickname. They called him something else. She called him by his nickname. And when she called him by his nickname, he broke down and began to weep and began to cry. And his people looking at him like, and he says, no one ever calls me by that name, 
but my grandmother. But because the lady was in the spirit, God gave her his nickname. And because he gave her the, her the nickname, all of a sudden that boy broke down, got saved, and the gang people, gang members got saved too. That's where we are now with this, the church and social media. We can no longer appeal to our fan base. You ain't got to hear me. We can no longer appeal to our fan base where they're going to get excited about everything we do. They, we can't do that. They get excited. You be like, boo, whoo, glory, whoo. This will be a different thing. You're going to have to have word. You're going to have to be able to minister genuinely to those that are listening that don't go to church that may never set their foot in the church. This is where the power of God will be displayed. This is where we'll see if we really have what we're talking about, not talking about with each other, because it's easy to do what we do in our setting behind the four walls. This here print brings us to a different place when it comes to social media, brings us to a different place where people will say, you know, I, I, I want to uh, give my life back to the Lord. And they will come from uh, like Sister Crystal Mays that fly will fly, get on a flight that no, has no relatives in Georgia. But because she heard the message I preached and got saved or reclaimed, she'll take a catch a plane and fly in for a weekend just to be in a service to hear the word of God, to get prayer, and to go back home. First time she came up, she left. They called on the way to the airport and said, your aunt just died, the one that she was a caregiver for. And she said, well, I'm, I'll, I'll be back. And she came on down and, and was in the service. And I've had other people that that has happened. And then we've had people that have uh, emailed us and texted us and said, your word helped me. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to get into people, tell you people's business, but your word kept me from committing suicide. Your word helped me from walking away from this marriage. Your word did this. This is why we need to understand that this is going to be important. This cannot be business and church as usual. Can't be. I believe God is getting us prepared. He's, you know, the doors have closed in many places. Are those that have having church where there is no audience? You got to you got to preach the word where you ain't got no audience. Nobody, you know, and I say it a lot. Somebody, come on, talk to me, somebody. When ain't nobody there to talk to you, you got to get in that word and teach it the way it should be taught. And so with this virus, let's take it serious. The church, God has now moved us from the place and going out into the high, the hedges and the highways. This is our opportunity to compel men, not just to come to the house of God, but compel men to be saved, men and women, to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. People are attached to their iPads, their phones, their computers. This is our opportunity for the church to really preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and let it be manifested in the world and not be concerned about just us. And then this is the time to take the proper use of social media. You know, let me say this, Lord, I, I've been on here long enough, but let me say this to some of you that will watch this and watching this. I know you're smart. I get it. You smart. I got it. You got a degree too. I, I got that. You are educated. Some of you just, you just, you know, you just wonderful. I got it. You got a gift. You got a talent. You got, I got all that. I have no issue with it. But let's use wisdom that we don't take social media and attack one another and take social media and kill one another and then turn around and want the world to respect us because if, if we're killing one another, the world's not going to respect us. And let me say this again because I need y'all to understand this, that this is not, this is not a Christian platform. 
Facebook is not. YouTube is not. The, I mean, if you do some on your own thing, but these are not Christian platforms. You got people that used to go to church. You got people that don't go to church anymore. You got people that say, I ain't going to never go back to a church. Some people said, I, I, I don't believe in church. I don't believe in nothing they do in church. Now, here's the deal. If you got people that feel that way, and then you, we get on and we go to attacking one another, you know, social media is, is not the place to attack one another. Social media is not the place to jump on one another. That's not our place. It's not our spot to do that. You know, if you got an issue with, with Pastor Martin, call me. Get my number. Find somebody that got it. Call me. Don't get on social media and go off and do stuff like that especially with those of us in ministry, because we never know who else is going to be watching and what they're going to be doing. And I always use this, this form of uh, a thing to, to get this point across. If I go to the restaurant, let's say the top notch restaurant in any city. If I go to the restaurant and when I get there at the door, if I meet the cook and the cook who is cooking the food says to me, when I get to the door, you don't want to eat in here because this food is nasty. This food is no good. This food is this. This food is that. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm not going to eat there. Why are you not going to eat that, Pastor Martin? Because if the cook that's cooking the food tells me that it's nasty and unsanitary and it's no good, why should I go in there when the cook told me that? I'm saying to those of you in ministry, get wisdom on, so on social media. This is not for your rebuking ground. This is not your ground to tell people whatever. Because we're not the only one watching. If, if this was social media, if this was Facebook Christian, we could do that. But this is open to everybody. So when you still go to telling people and they tune in to you as a, a pastor, a preacher, whoever, and you go to hearing the church ain't no good, the church ain't this, the church ain't that. And you the pastor of the church and you saying all churches, they none of these churches no good. And then you turn around and say, I want to invite you to my service Sunday. Why should I come to your service? I have no reason to come to your service. You just told me that the church is, and church is no good. And you the cook. So I'm, I'm not coming. Not doing it. If you if you telling me that the church and you the cook has no power. <sighs> You telling me the church has no power, then tell me why should I even come to the church looking for deliverance or a breakthrough and you the cook. You just told me church ain't got no power, so why why am I even coming to you? You you like the you like Jesus when he uh when the man said I I brought my son to you, he's a he's a lunatic, which means moonstruck. Uh, he, he's a lunatic. I brought him to your disciples. They couldn't cast him out. And uh, every time the moon go, to, uh, there's a moon. All of a sudden, uh, the the enemy, uh, the devil, takes him and throw him down and tear him. And uh, he, the, you know, Jesus uh, uh, delivered the boy. And, and he said, "Bring him hither to me." He brought him to Jesus. He laid hands on him, and the boy got up and he delivered him back again to his father. It was Jesus said to his disciples. He said, you know, we, we, we were trying to do this. And Jesus said, don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about it. And, and the man said, I brought them to your disciples and they couldn't do anything. If we don't have no power and, and we keep telling folk as preachers that the church don't have no power, then why should they come to the church? Now, you ain't got to hear me. You ain't got to believe me. I know you, you sometimes, Lord, let me get out of here. Sometimes we think we're being smart, but what we don't understand when you indict one church or the next church and you are in leadership and as the pastor, especially on social media, 
then what happens to you and what happens to us is they put us all in the same category. So when you think you're wonderful, that affects everybody. It just don't affect me or somebody else. It affects your church too because they're looking at you. Well, if none of them, they, they think all preachers are no good. It, let's, take it, let's take it like this, and I'm, I'm going to stop y'all. Let's take it like this. When you think about the police, let's talk about it. Most black people, most, I didn't say all, because we got some good cops, we got some people that are black that are police, and so I'm not saying it in that manner. But when you think about it, most people, most of, of us of color, we have a different perspective and a different look uh, on how the, on cops, on, on police. We, we are suspicious of them, even if they're good. And so we, we wonder what their motive, when they pull you over, you wonder what they're up to. Or if they do, you, you just have a suspicion. It's in your head. It's in your mind. That's, that's the way you feel. And, and, and sometimes you can't get it. I don't trust no cops. I don't trust no. And, and so you, you have put every police, no matter if they great police, you put them all in the same category because maybe you had one bad experience, two bad experience, or whatever it was, or maybe a friend of yours had an experience. So now you put everyone in the same category. That's how we do when we don't understand. When you throwing stuff out uh, recklessly on the social media platform, then what happens is they put us all in the same category. They don't believe that none of us are any good. No care how good you think you are. I don't care how good you you prophesy. How good you you got a word. They don't. They don't. They don't do that because they're like uh uh-uh. uh. No. So let's let's be mindful on the social media platform not to always take it and use it in the way that is destructive towards somebody else. Maybe they don't do things the way you would do it, but there's a way that we should handle each other without always um, using this platform as though we are and I'm talking myself and everybody else, as though we are the experts on every subject matter and everything that needs to be done. We are not the experts. There's some things that every one of us may do differently, and uh, we may do it a whole different way. I mean, true, we may do it a whole different way. So we're not experts on everything. And and I'm I'm very cautious when I when when I hear people get on that just they they the masters of all subjects. I'm leery of people like that. I am, because I know God can give you enough. But there's nobody that's the master of every subject or everything that goes on. Every one of us have learned, and we're still learning today. And so I say to you, let's let's do better. Uh, when it comes again to this virus, let's do better. When it comes to the church, uh, this open door that's open to us, let's let's take advantage of it, and uh, you know, let's reach out. Let's let's do some. Um, not saying that you haven't done it before, because some of you so touchy. Um, let's do some real ministry. Then, secondly, you know, let's use social media media as a positive thing to bless people and to uh, share with people and to give them this message of hope and love. You know, I know judgment is included in all it. I got all that. But wisdom tells us how to do what we do. This is what you miss. This is what most of us miss where we just, you know, all y'all going to hell. And this is God. God's going to kill everybody. God's going to do this. God's killing you all. And then talking about, you need to come to Jesus. He that winneth souls is wise. That's what I'm telling you. He that winneth souls is what? Wise. You have to be able. You have to be able to ask God to give you wisdom how to win a soul. Every method 
does not work on and with everybody. That's all I'm saying. Every, every method and every way don't work with everybody. Some of you are not going to embarrass people to salvation. I'm just here to tell you, some of you, you think because you hard and screaming and that ain't going to get some people, they're, going to leave, they're not going to come back nowhere. You, you don't do that. He that winneth souls is wise. If God give you to do that on a certain thing, then you do that. But that shouldn't be the only way that you can minister to people, whether it's in person or social media. Shouldn't be the way you do it. And I've shared this with you all so many times before, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to be done tonight. Uh, and and I, I, he'll probably look at this later, and I like using him. Hope he don't mind me. But uh, my, my my media person, Brother Jerry Smith, uh, he's been with me probably about 20-some years now. Uh, very valuable person uh, to me. He has helped me in a whole lot of areas. But when 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 Brother Jerry came, I think he had been in church or raised in church, I don't know. But when he came, he was not coming to church to be saved. He was coming to church. Uh, he was coming to church to uh, date his wife. And he liked her. He, he saw something in her and he wanted to talk to her. And so he started coming to church, you know, trying to get close to her. And he wasn't coming. So he would hear me preach and stuff and I would preach and do everything. And so one, one day um, he asked me, he said, um, Pastor Martin, can I, I, I want to join the church Sunday. I said, all right. He said, well, but I got to be honest with you. Well, what, what, do, what do you need to tell me? I'm not saved. So will that prevent me from joining the church? I said, no, I'm going to take you in Sunday morning. I'm going to take you in Sunday morning. Now, most people would be like, no, you can't get, you can't join this church till you get saved. That's your approach. That was not mine. He that went of souls is wise. So I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't go that route with him. I didn't do it. And that Sunday morning, I opened the doors of the church and, and took him in. Well, his wife was in, in the choir. And he, uh, his, he was trying to talk to her at the time. So he followed her to the choir rehearsal. When he got to the choir rehearsal, uh, my wife was directing the choir and they were practicing. And the spirit of the Lord dropped in the choir rehearsal. Jerry got saved, not on Sunday morning. He didn't get saved in a prayer meeting. He got saved in choir rehearsal. I want you to hear me. And some 20 or more years later, he is one of the most faithful and loyal members. A pleasant spirit. Nice guy. One of the nicest one you would ever meet. But what if I would have told him, you can't join this church until you get saved. What if they wouldn't have let him even sit in on the choir rehearsal? What and where would he be today? He that winneth souls is wise. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just telling you the truth. Some of you, you tried to embarrass folk to salvation and it's just not going to work. When they get out your presence, they just not coming back your way. You know, it, it's not, it's, it's like a, a guy used to know, um, he, when he liked to pray, I, I, I'm not going to say he was deep, but when he would pray for you, he'd have no wisdom. If he see you in the store or whatever, and he said, can I pray for you? And you know, you're like, okay. But you know, most people, when they say they want to pray for you in a public setting, if it's not church, you know, at least they'll just bow their heads and take your hand and be like, father, I pray that you touch not this guy. This guy would get his hands and put on top of your head, Father, and out loud, in the name of Jesus, do it. Now, notice, I'm not a sinner. I'm a saved person. But folk that, that's coming by, they don't understand what he's doing. They have no clue. They, they have no clue. I mean, none. Y'all going up there turning the hospital out. And, and and 
praying loud. Oh Lord, let me let me quit. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, let's use some wisdom in this season that God has given us. This is an open door, and the church has to move in this area, and let's be wise in what we do. Let's have some wisdom. Let's show wisdom. Let's show love. Let's show compassion. You know, I know some of you got the rebuke in ministry. You keep it up. You go right ahead. I'm not telling you not to. Maybe that's what God told you to do. Whatever floats your boat, do it. I'm just saying, some of us got to learn to do better. And we're going to find that we're going to get the same results. People are going to get saved and delivered and set free because we're using wisdom in what we do. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I pray and trust that you got something in this Let's Talk ministry tonight. And let's, uh, let me tell you, be safe out there, people. Uh, don't, don't push yourself, put yourself in harm's way. Be careful, be safe as you are going, um, you know, out to do whatever. Uh, just be safe. Uh, you know, this is not about competition with the world, whether the store is open, whether this store is open. None of that means anything to me. What matters to me is the people that I pastor. I want them to be safe. And just in case they, if they don't know something's going on with them, I don't want others to be affected by what's going on. And so it's about us being safe. It's about us using common sense. It has nothing to do with fear or anything, but it's just the safe side. When you, when you got, uh, when my grandkids are sick, I, I love them, but I keep them where they are so I won't get sick. So this is just common sense. It's, it's just common sense to do. And then, uh, again, let's take advantage, go out, and um, let's take social media to a place that we can um, appreciate each other, love each other. Let's do whatever we do in love and uh, appreciation for one another. And I believe the Lord will bless us. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for those that are watching. I thank you for those that will watch. I thank you for those, God, that have come on and those that have even made comments and given hearts and thumbs up. I thank you for them. I thank you for those that even disagree, God, because I respect everyone's opinion. I pray that you would bless each and every person, especially during this time that we're dealing with this uh, pandemic, this uh, coronavirus, I pray that you would cover us with the blood. I pray that you would keep us, our immune systems healthy, keep us where we'll be able, God, to move in health. I pray that you touch now those that are affected by it, those that have already tested positive. I pray, God, that you would give them a miracle wherever they are. We pray for those in the body of Christ that have tested positive. We've even had some deaths. We pray that you would cover in the name of Jesus, give miracles and bring them through and bring them out. Let them come out on the other side of this. We pray for the touch of God and we pray for it to be done in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now and we give you glory. We thank you for touching God, those families that are affected by this and loved ones God, I pray that you touch them, give strength, lift, sustain, hold us up with your right hand. And we'll thank you. Lord, I pray that you bless everyone that's watching, everyone that's under the sound of my voice. Bless them now. God, bless every church and every ministry. God, I know that there are those that want to fight and uh, paint the picture that every ministry is bad and every church is bad. But I pray, God, that you would touch those that are doing what you've called them to do and doing the right thing. I pray that you would give them strength, sustain their ministries and those things during this time. We even pray for the president. God, we pray that you would give him what he needs to do. And we pray that you would help uh, to surround him with godly wisdom and with wisdom. God, even in the midst of this crisis, we pray that you do it for every governor, for every mayor, every senator, every congressman, every congresswoman. We pray. God, that you do it and then give us wisdom. Give every pastor that's had to make a decision, whether it was forced or whether it was encouraged or recommended 
or whether, God, they just had to do it. We pray that you would touch them. And God, we pray that you would give all of us wisdom. None of us know everything, but give us the wisdom as we call on you, as we acknowledge you, that you would direct our paths. We thank you now for it being done in Jesus' name. And we give your name glory. And we give your name praise for it. Amen. Well, God bless you tonight. Thank you uh, so much for being a part. Let me say this last thing about uh, ministry. You know, a lot of times we are, when we talk about church, we, we say the church, uh, the body of Christ. And we talk about how bad churches are on this, that, and the other. And here, here's another thing we need to look at. Just to think about it, uh, praying for the Jones family. Yes, we are in Albany, Georgia. Uh, think about it. Here, here's the thing that we need to think about. We're only dealing with our culture or what we are accustomed to or what we were raised under. We haven't been to, I don't want to use China, but I'm, I'm going to use China. We haven't been to church in China. We haven't been to church in Italy. We haven't been to church in a lot of these other countries where they do church totally different from us. They may not even act the way we act or do things like we do it. Are they wrong? Or is it a part of their culture? And so if that's the case, a lot of us, we only, we only have the knowledge to, and I'm going to use this, we only have the knowledge to criticize where we've, where we've been, what we know, or what we've been connected to. Most of us, most of us cannot, we, we haven't, we didn't grow up in a Caucasian church. We grew up in a black church, Pentecostal, a Baptist, or whatever. So in our churches, the, when the preacher hoops or whatever, we, feel, we say we feel the spirit. We had church today. If we went to another uh, group, uh, if we went to another culture and they did not do stuff the way we do it we would feel man they ain't got no anointing in here this 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 ain't uh uh i don't feel this could it be that we are quick to criticize when we talk about church we're criticizing just where we are and we haven't traveled abroad to see how other people operate when i say abroad i'm not talking about just in the United States where you travel to the Kojic Convention or the PAW. Or I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about across the waters and other places where they do things totally different. Would we be able to survive church in a different part of the world or in a different culture? Would we be able to do it? Most of us, probably not. Just saying. Think about it. All right, y'all. I got to go. Thank you so much for being a part. I pray and trust that you've been blessed tonight. Uh, please share this with somebody. If you've been blessed, share it with somebody. Thank you once again for joining me on tonight. Uh, I, I wanted to acknowledge those that were uh, watching, but I got caught up in just rolling and doing what I was doing. But I, I really appreciate each and every one of you that have uh, watched tonight and that are watching and that will be sharing. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you doing this time. I pray and I want you to understand that we are going to come out on the other side of this. May God bless you and may all God's best be yours. <laughs>